the Rock Art Mapping Project, an experimental digital project aimed at the documentation, storage and visualization of our rock art heritage. The project has been active in the Ukoshlamba Drakensberg Park and Amazizi and Amangwani traditional authority areas since 2005. It collects site information to make it available to researchers, custodians and field managers in a format and quantity never before available to them. It's essentially a specialist tool designed for rock art and allied professionals, but it can also be used to make certain aspects of rock art knowledge available to the public where deemed appropriate. The project consists of a field-based phase of data capture, followed by an office-based phase of data processing, archiving and visualization. For each site of rock art, the project's activities in the field involve the detailed digital photography of the rock art site, getting an accurate GPS reading, taking down detailed notes on its archaeological content, making observations and suggestions about site-specific management issues, the scanning of the rock formations in 3D, 360 degree photography to create panoramic views, the recording of high definition three-dimensional 360 degree videos, and the field training of management staff in the use of GPS cameras and long-term monitoring. Back at the office, we process the field data, enter it into the electronic database, including hyperlinks to web albums and videos. We create 3D fly-throughs, true views of each site, and virtual tours of selected sites. We connect all site data to a geographic information system and create a web-based GIS for management use. We also train management staff in the accessing and use of the data. The field archaeologist creates a thorough photographic record for each site. This includes shots of every painted figure that is visible, even when highly faded, and all clusters of figures and panels, as well as any graffiti or natural feature that may come into contact with the rock art. While rock art is the primary focus of the project, the field archaeologist also records other historical or archaeological features, such as surface artifacts. She captures the site's internal rock formations on camera, as well as its location in the landscape from a certain distance in relation to nearby landmarks. In a landscape where sandstone outcrops occur frequently, this is useful to aid rock art workers or field rangers in relocating the site later on. These visual aids have proved invaluable in this regard. The field archaeologist records south and east coordinates and altitude of each site by means of a handheld GPS device and the direction the site faces in the landscape. These are used to update old, less accurate positions, to plot sites on topographic maps and satellite imagery with precision, and ultimately to, to further secure the site's location and identity. The field archaeologist records all site details on paper field sheets that are later transcribed digitally and entered into the electronic database. She collects local and official place names, as well as detailed directions to the site in areas where there are often no paths or obvious landmarks with which to orientate oneself. She also records iconographic details of the rock art imagery and makes observations and recommendations related to the management of the site. Newly collected data is added to the entries of previously recorded sites, extending their recording history, and new entries are created for previously unrecorded sites under new national site numbers. Certain sites are also recorded by a separate team of land surveyors who employ a 3D laser scanner to measure and model the rock features to millimetric accuracy. They achieve this by placing spherical targets around the site at a certain distance from the rock art. These targets are recorded in the scan and the scanner is then moved to different locations around the site in order to capture all rock surface contours. Each station captures the same targets as reference points and these are later used to join the various scans together into one model. The scanner can record points in space as close together as one millimeter, millions of which form a 3D surface that is called a point cloud. Once the scan is complete, the scanner is replaced on the tripod by a high-resolution digital camera that is mounted in such a way that its optical axis is in precisely the same position as the scanner's optical axis was during the scan. The camera operator then records a 360 degree panorama that is used in the data processing stage to color the point cloud, as well as allowing further digital imagery to be overlaid onto it. 
A 3D high-definition video camera is used to capture a 360-degree 3D video of the site and surrounding landscape. During the data recording and documentation process in the field, the team involves the local field rangers and trains them in the use of GPS and camera equipment, as well as the long-term monitoring needs for each site. The rock art mapping project was conceived to re-record the hundreds of known sites in the Ukushlamba Drakensberg Park and surrounding areas in new digital format. Exploration hasn't been the primary function of the project because the UDP is a well-researched area where we have benefited from the recording activities of earlier rock art workers over decades. But while the field teams are working in an area, a certain amount of time is spent searching for new sites. In zones where the project has been active, we have counted an increase of over 20% in the number of recorded sites. This is an important achievement because rock art is a protected heritage, and if land managers don't know where it occurs, it cannot be managed for the benefit of future generations. In many cases, the data storage and archiving of rock art records is still largely paper-based or in very rudimentary electronic formats. The project incorporates existing archival materials and database setups, developing a cumulative and more comprehensive digital database in which information can be added or accessed rapidly and easily and presented in many formats. The photographs captured in the field are individually labeled and showcased in web albums, which are hyperlinked to the database, allowing one to navigate easily through large numbers of digital images. The data is searchable and complex data queries for research or management purposes can be carried out by authorized individuals. The complete database is housed at the KwaZulu-Natal Museum, which is the official regional recording center for the province. Once the laser scanning team is back at the office, the processing of the 3D data begins. They download the scanner data and stitch the points and images recorded from the various scanner positions together to form one 3D model. The web-based GIS allows secure access to the database and its various information sets from remote locations as long as there is relatively good internet access. This is particularly aimed at giving field managers access to the information they need in order to manage these sites optimally. The web GIS shows various layers of information and the manager can access the visual component simply by hyperlinking from the site point. A manager can also perform a query on the background database to retrieve certain required information. In this example, a manager is trying to locate all the sites in a particular area that could be damaged by fire. He can then arrange to send field teams to clear away vegetation that is growing too close to the rock art before a planned block burn. This process shows how you can create a digital model from elevation data, such as contours. It allows you to visualize the Earth's surface in 3D and even fly through the landscape as shown in this tour from Google Earth. It is often very difficult for field teams to locate sites in the field, especially in the more complex and variable terrain. Realistic 3D terrain models that fly across the landscape help field teams familiarize themselves with the area and to see rock art sites, hiking trails, waterfalls and other features in relation to the surrounding environment. The tours are created in Google Earth, which is free, easy to use, and the results can easily be shared with relevant park managers. The scanned data can easily be shared using the TrueView web-based viewer. All the yellow triangles show where individual scans were taken. If you click on any of the scanned stations, you will be able to view the scanned data. What you are now seeing is actually millions of laser points that are so dense that the surface appears solid. Photographs of the site have been added to the scan to give it real color. Each laser point has its own XYZ coordinate, which means that the model is accurate to the last millimeter. Using the measure, you can take accurate measurements of the paintings or any other features in the scan. A virtual tour is an innovative tool that allows you to virtually visit a rock art shelter and to explore it in a fun and interactive way. You can move around the site freely and zoom in to see detail of the rock art. The virtual tour is created by capturing many photographs in a 360 degree view and stitching them together to form one panorama image called a scene. Hot spots on the map in the top right hand corner are used to move between scenes. This allows you to move freely around the site 
giving you the impression that you are actually there. This particular site is a fine example of sand hunter-gatherer rock art. The shelter is 120 meters long and contains 616 individual figures. The painting mostly consists of antelopes such as eland and rebuck, and men with hunting gear. For sites that are open to the public, virtual tours can be a great way to promote tourism. People may be more likely to visit a site after seeing it virtually, and it also allows those unable to reach remote sites to view them. They can also be used for education purposes, teaching children about rock art and the need to conserve it. Many sites have been severely affected by natural weathering and vandalism. Documenting and conserving rock art is therefore a pressing need. A Geographical Information System, or GIS, is a computer program that allows you to view and analyze rock art data. You can switch on various layers such as rivers and paths. You can also use the information tool to display the information associated to that site. Hyperlinks can be inserted to display images or any other documents or records. Fire can cause serious damage to rock art sites, so knowing which sites are at risk from scheduled burns is therefore very important. We will use this as an example to show how a GIS can analyze and extract relevant information. This is a layer showing burn zones within the conservation area. We are first going to use the layer information to select the burn zones that are selected for burning, and then we can create a new layer showing only the zones we are interested in. You can also change the color to make it more meaningful and rearrange the layers so that the rock art sites are displayed on top of the new zone layer. The sites are highlighted in blue. By opening the layer information table, you can see which sites are at risk and send field rangers to cut the vegetation surrounding the rock art. Our project is a work in progress, and our vision is for it to continue to grow, to record and monitor sites in other parts of the country and beyond. The recording, mapping, and databasing formats are malleable and can be adapted to address the specific research and management needs of particular areas. Digital technology is also advancing all the time, and databases are living, breathing animals. It's not possible to record or map archaeological sites in a landscape wholly and completely, or for once and for all. But in the face of this process of disappearance, we strive to mobilize new technology to help preserve the old art in some form for posterity. Time is passing, and the human impact on the natural world is increasing. Rock art is a fragile and dwindling pictorial archive embedded in an ever-shifting environment. Moving along from presenting the art as an assemblage of isolated pictures and details, what is beginning to emerge through our work is a sense of a vast and varied landscape of rock pictures.